Hello science fans and welcome to Sciencia. Our topic for today is the science behind organic farming. Organic food is very popular nowadays. It is being advertised as the environmentally friendly and healthy way to go. But it is also known to be very expensive. But what does organic really mean? The scientific definition of the word organic refers to the study of chemical compounds that contain carbon that may be linked to hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen. Here at Scientia, we've talked about a specific group of organic molecules before, and these are called the biomolecules because they are the chemical compounds that primarily make up life. These four groups of organic compounds are lipids that make up our oil and fat, nucleic acids that are our DNA and RNA, carbohydrates or the sugars that give us energy, and proteins that make up our muscles. But not all organic compounds are healthy, safe, and natural. Examples of toxic organic compounds are used for energy, precursors to plastic, pesticides, and herbicides. These substances are poisonous to humans and other organisms. They are also known carcinogens and environmental contaminants. Also, there are a lot of naturally occurring, helpful, and safe inorganic compounds. Some of them you actually need to drink and breathe in every day. Some are useful natural antiseptics, and some are healthy nutrients found in the soil needed by plants to grow. What I'm trying to say here is, in the realm of science and chemistry, there is no false dichotomy that organic is good and inorganic is bad. So the term organic, as it is used to describe food and farming, has no relations to its true chemical meaning. As it is presented in media, organic food and farming relates to a simpler and cleaner way of growing food, calling back to old traditional practices. But the concept of organic farming is not old or traditional per se. It was pioneered in the 20th century by Sir Albert Howard, F.H. King, and Rudolf Steiner. Exposure to traditional environmental practices in India and other Asian countries inspired these white men that the use of animal manure, often made into compost, cover crops, crop rotation, and biologically based pest controls resulted in a better farming system. And the movement has grown since as a response to the perceived damage of pesticide use, fertilizer use, and GMO use in conventional farming. What are the real damages caused by conventional agriculture? One of the problematic methods of conventional agriculture is monocropping. Monocropping is the agricultural practice of growing a single crop year after year on the same land. Rice, corn, soybean, and wheat are the common crops grown using monoculture methods. Farmers resort to monoculturing or monocropping in order to maximize limited resources such as capital investments on land, machine, fertilizers, and more. The disadvantages of monocropping is that it leads to difficulties in maintaining soil cover, it encourages the population growth of pests in the area, and it results to soil degradation by damaging soil structure and absorption of the same nutrients. This means that monocropping farms will need to invest more on fertilizers, pesticides, and other technological interventions that would result to a greater carbon footprint. And speaking of fertilizer use, conventional agriculture has led to the use of millions of tons of fertilizers worldwide. Typical fertilizers contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These substances are not harmful at all. In fact, plants and algae love them very much. Excessive use of fertilizers, however, would lead to the nutrients draining into nearby bodies of water. The excessive nutrients in the water could lead to algal blooms and eventually to eutrophication. Eutrophication is the decline in oxygen content of water that can cause the death of fish and other marine species. 
pesticide use has also increased over time. With shocking percentages and with so many countries using over 20 million kilograms of pesticides annually. The problem with conventional pesticide use is they can kill beneficial insects. They can spread through the air and when inhaled by humans, can lead to upper respiratory diseases and even cancer. Pesticide residue on food is also a big problem if they're not washed properly. It could lead to poisoning, diarrhea, and yes, cancer. A potential alternative to help solve these problems are GMOs. The use of genetically modified eggplants in Bangladesh alone has shown a 20% increase in yield and profits and a significant decrease in use of pesticides. But GMOs have suffered from a bad reputation because their initial deployment was through large companies that were accused of greed and at the same time, there was limited to no effective science communication at that time. So, it was very easy to throw around propaganda around these potentially helpful products. And it is so easy to be afraid of something that seems so new, even if it's old, and something that creates changes at a level that seems so abstract. But what has organic farming got to offer? Personally, one of the things I find beautiful with organic farming is the value it puts on traditional ecological knowledge. Traditional ecological knowledge stems from a familiarity of the land born of hundreds of years of direct contact and observation. But there is still so much wisdom that we can get from these amazing communities in order to develop low-cost but efficient technologies. Organic farming also emphasizes the need for crop rotation. And this is based on solid principles of botany that takes advantage of the different nutrients that plants need and the nutrients, the microbiomes they cultivate could return to the soil. Crop rotation also prevents overpopulation of pests because if their target plant is no longer growing in the area, then they would have no reason to stay. Organic farming also emphasizes the use of natural fertilizers from manure and compost. This limits excessive introduction of nutrients into the soil. The use of compost as fertilizer also significantly reduces the carbon footprint of agriculture because we create something of value from materials that would have been discarded anyway. Now, of course, organic farming doesn't mean you don't encounter pests at all. But instead of using commercial pesticides, organic farming resorts to natural ingredients to create deterrents that would repel pests rather than outright kill them. Interestingly, beta-exotoxin is one of those natural pesticides used in organic farming. It is produced by a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis that can be cultivated in the soil. This same toxin is the one introduced in genetically modified plants to prevent the use of excessive pesticides. So, it's not really so artificial after all. But what are the limitations of organic farming? For one thing, food grown through organic methods are 25% to more than 100% more expensive than those grown through conventional methods. The costs come from additional training needed, fairer labor costs, more labor-intensive preparations, increases in capital investment, and more. Apart from that, organic technology is still inefficient. Organic farms produce at least 25% less yield than conventional farms. And with our continuously growing population, this could mean that at least 2 billion people would not be able to afford the food that they will need to eat. Apart from this, naturally made fertilizers from manure can still cause poisoning and diarrhea when not washed properly. I've been victimized by this when I eat salads at organic restaurants. So no more salads for me. But apart from that, natural pesticides can still harm beneficial insects. So it's not really a perfect solution. And with the threats of climate change, organic farming can truly lessen our carbon footprint. But the environment is still changing. So the technologies of organic farming might not be able to provide enough food for our species. 
So yeah, organic farming is the latest fad. It has its benefits, but it has yet to be the be-all and end-all of sustainable farming. I hope we don't end up being distrustful of biotechnology as the latest developments can really help us provide food that is low-cost and efficient for more people in the planet. I hope you were able to learn something from our short video on organic technologies today. I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much and see you around!